Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. And welcome back to part two of our three-part mini-series in generating online income. In this episode, we're going to talk all about the back end of the business and what you're going to need from a more administrative point of view uh, to keep the business going. So let's jump straight into part two. In this part of the mini-series, we're going to talk about kind of the back end. Uh, we're setting up a new business online. You, it's part two of a three-part mini-series. If you didn't listen to the first one, you might want to go back and do that. But in the first part of the mini-series, we talked about how you can quickly start generating some income online to maybe replace some of that income that you lost at the moment during the coronavirus lockdown. In this episode, we're going to talk about the back end a little bit uh, and kind of the admin side of keeping this uh, new business running. So to get started... You don't actually need to set up a whole new business. Um, every jurisdiction is a little bit different, so seek some advice from an accountant or a friend who may have their own business before you start getting set up. But most jurisdictions will have some sort of concept of the sole trader, the sole proprietor, where you don't necessarily need to go and set up a big business or a new company. Uh, you can generate income and claim that income as personal income, just like as if you were getting paid. Um, further on down the track, you definitely might want to set up a business and a business name uh, once this thing's up and running and you're generating some income. However, don't let that stop you from getting started. We want to get started as quickly as possible. The other thing you're going to need is um, some sort of back-end administration system. So, um, you know, the ability to create text documents, spreadsheets, presentations, that kind of thing. So you don't need to go out and buy expensive software. Uh, there's plenty of cloud providers that will provide you that sort of thing. Uh, the Google G Suite, for example, and Office 365 from Microsoft are all online versions of that kind of Office software. You know, most they'll give you a... Uh, an ability to generate documents, so Google Documents, for example, or Word Documents. Uh, if you go for Office 360, you can create spreadsheets, you can create presentation decks like PowerPoint uh, or slides, that sort of thing, uh, and some additional software in there that you might need. And there isn't a big outlay to get started with this. You can get started, I think, with like about five or ten dollars a month on both of those platforms. So. Go out, have a look at Office 365. Uh, you can start a monthly plan, I think, for just about 5 to $10. Google G Suite is a very similar sort of suite of products. Uh, and again, that uh, you can start with that for 5 or $10. Uh, and there's another one that's kind of a free version uh, called Zoho Office. Um, obviously, the Zoho Office isn't as widely used as the other two, so you may have compatibility problems when you're trying to share documents with other people or collaborate with other people who might be using other tools. I personally, I use the G Suite, the Google G Suite. I think it's great. Very easy to get started. Everything's stored in the cloud, so you can work from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. Uh, if you lose your, your PC or something like that, you lose your uh, laptop, you haven't lost all your documents. Uh, they're all still up there in the cloud. You can share them with people. You just send them a link so you can collaborate on documents, for example, for customers or clients or that sort of thing. And all the G Suite documents can be exported into PDFs or um, their office, their Microsoft Office equivalent. So it's a pretty good deal. And you're going to need some sort of email system. Now, Office 365 and the Google G Suite uh, both come with... Uh, um, email facilities that you can use. So with the Office Suite, you're going to get Outlook to use as your email client. Uh, and then with the Google G Suite, you're going to get Gmail to use as your, as, uh, as your email client. Now, you're probably also going to want to go out and get a domain name for your business if you don't already have one. 
Uh, easy enough to do. Just go to Crazy Domains, Namecheap, uh, pick a domain name provider. Do shop around, though, because sometimes you'll find different prices depending on what domain name or what domain space you're buying into. So I'm talking about the, you know, www.mycompany.com. They're going to need if you're going to set up an online website. So, uh, yeah, you just go to one of those domain providers, uh, shop around a little bit between a few of them, uh, get a good price, and you go ahead and buy it. Now, the big problem is probably going to be that it's the one you want's probably gone. So you're going to need to do a bit of brainstorming. Just sit down with a piece of paper and write out every combination that you can think of. Um, some of the domain providers will even have domain name generators where you can put in, you know, the root word of whatever it is. You know, if you're setting up a site about baseball, you can put in baseball and it will spit out a bunch of uh, potential uh, domain names that, you know, have suffixes or prefixes or things like that. Obviously, .com is the place you want to be if you can. Uh, if not, you can get one of the other domains, .co or some of the other new domain spaces that are available so typically they run kind of, you know, in the 10 to 15 to $20 range. But again, do shop around between different domain providers. If you really got some money to burn, you can go buy an existing one from someone who's trying to sell it. But since we're trying to get up and running quickly in this mini series, or that's the assumption anyway, uh, I would say maybe try and find a new one that you can register on your own. Once you register that, you will have the domain ready to go. A lot of the domain providers will give you an easy, simple way to set up a website, or like a WordPress website, for example. They'll have some wizard you can follow. You can choose to do that, or you can choose to just set up your own website somewhere um, and do all the hosting and set up from scratch so that it's not necessarily tied to your domain provider. If you do end up setting up a website somewhere else, you're going to need to get into your DNS settings and redirect the traffic or let the traffic know where to go to find your website. So, when they type in, you know, mycompany.com, it knows which web server to direct that traffic to. The other part of that domain name is going to be attached to your email. So if you're going to be doing business, I would suggest you want to have your domain as your primary uh, email address. So it's going to be barry at mycompany.com rather than using, say, barry at Gmail or barry at Outlook or something like that. It's not quite as professional um, as having your own domain name uh, as your email address. So again, what you're going to need to do, uh, Gmail makes it pretty easy to just redirect all your domain-related email to Gmail. You just go into the DNS settings. Uh, I'll, I'll have a link to a tutorial in the show notes. Just go into your DNS settings and then uh, tell it you want to redirect it to Gmail, and uh, it will do that. Same thing with Office 365. You can do that. So if you want to head over to theactivemarketer.com and go to the podcast section, look for the show notes for this episode, and um, I'll have some tutorials there on how you can redirect your email uh, from your domain name or uh, DNS settings to Gmail or Outlook 365. You also may want to have some sort of calendar app where people can book time with you. So especially if you're consulting uh, and that sort of thing, not so much if you're doing physical products, but if you're consulting or selling information products or there's an add-on where people can buy some of your time, uh, you might want to create a calendar app where people can go, they can see the available slots that you have and they can pick one automatically uh, and that will schedule an appointment with them. There's um, several in that space that are pretty good. Um, Calendly, and again, links in the show notes. Calendly, uh, Acuity Scheduling, Book Like a Boss. There are several of those in there uh, in those calendaring apps. So what they will do is you can set up times that you're going to be available, you know, half hour blocks, hour blocks, whatever it's going to be between certain times. Um, some of them can even attach to your personal calendar, say your Google calendar, uh, and see which times are available. And then people will come to the web interface or a link that you send them. They can see the available slots, which is automatically generated by the calendar depending on when you, when you say you're busy or free, uh, and they can select a slot 
time zones will adjust automatically. So if you're doing business with people in other time zones, other countries, the time zones will ought to be sh- automatically be shown in their local time. Uh, they can pick one, book that time with you. Uh, most of them will also have the ability to charge for that time. So if you're selling an hour's consulting package, for example, you can set up an hour's appointment time. Uh, when they schedule it, it'll ask them for their credit card or their PayPal account. Uh, and they'll pay you your X number of dollars uh, for that fee. And you can take payments straight through the calendaring app as well, which makes it super convenient for everyone involved. And then lastly, you're going to need some sort of follow-up, some system or some sort of email marketing system. Now, what you want to start doing as soon as possible is start collecting names and email addresses of all the people who come to your website or all the people who are interested in your products. Uh, uh, and you can just go back and listen to all the other episodes on how to do that and some of the strategies involved. You're going to want to create that database so that you can talk to these people again. So they've come to your website, they've opted into your mailing list, uh, and now we want to be able to speak to them again or make them offers again or give them news, events, that sort of thing. So continue. you want to continually grow that database of people Uh, So we have that there as an asset to the business, and we can talk to those people whenever we like. Um, Typically, most people get started with something like MailChimp or AWeber. Um, But as your business grows, you're probably going to find out pretty quickly you want to replace those tools. So I would suggest getting something a little bit more robust. It doesn't really end up costing you much more in the end. So if you're talking about maybe a list of a 1,000 contacts to get you started, um, you know, you, you should be paying in the neighborhood of, you know, 15 to $30 a month for a robust email marketing system. Uh, obviously, Active Campaign is the one that I use, uh, but there are others out there. If you don't jive with Active Campaign, um, you know, you've got Drip, you've got ConvertKit, uh, things like that. What I would suggest you do is go set up a free trial to all of those, have a bit of a play around, see which one seems to jive with your mindset the best uh, and pick the one that's easy for you to figure out and easy for you to use. If none of them are easy to figure out or easy to use, uh, then by all means, you know, I'd say pick Active Campaign. It's my personal favorite. Plenty of training here on the podcast and on the website to get you started with Active Campaign. So that's really kind of the guts of the back end. You want some sort of uh, office document suite. Uh, Word documents, spreadsheets, that sort of thing. You want some sort of email system that you can use. Uh, and those both those things can be provided by Google G Suite uh, or Office 365, for example. You're going to want a domain name. You're going to want some way for people to book appointments. And you're going to want an email marketing system to follow up with these people. You may also want to think about some sort of accounting system to maintain your business's books. Uh, Ideally, something that uh, your bookkeeper may be able to log into. You can give them access. They can uh, balance all your books, or you may want to do it yourself. Uh, And you also want the ability to send invoices to people as well. So if you meet someone face-to-face and you don't necessarily transact online, you need to send them an invoice. Uh, Most of these will have the functionality to do that. So the ones I suggest you have a look at are Xero, X-E-R-O, Xero.com is the popular accounting package. Most accountants or bookkeepers will be familiar with that. There's QuickBooks.com and there's another nice light one called FreshBooks.com so you can keep your books balanced uh, and give something to your accountant at the end of the year so that they can help with your taxes. So that's all the stuff that's involved in the back end, or at least enough stuff to get you started uh, with running a business online. Again, all of it's in the cloud. Um, You can access it from anywhere. There's an internet connection. You don't really have to worry about servers or what's, you know, know, your laptop getting stolen or lost. All that stuff's in the cloud, ready to go anytime that you want it to. All right. So now that we've talked about the front of the business uh, and we've talked about kind of the back end of the business Uh, we're going to kind of put it all together in a roadmap of how to get started in the next episode. We're going to welcome Dan Norris and we're going to walk through his seven day startup methodology. So tune in tomorrow when we finish up the mini series with number three. (music) 
head over to theactivemarketer.com forward slash 78 uh, for all the links and show notes for this episode. And join us tomorrow where we put it all together using Dan Norris's seven-day startup methodology. See you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.